Well, Madagascar's environmental problems are pretty well known. 90% uh, of its forests has been lost. Um, they've got a growing population, so this is just increasing the pressure on the, on the remaining forest uh, and therefore the animals that live within it. St. Luce is only one of two areas of littoral forest left in Madagascar. St. Luce is comprised of, or was comprised of, 17 separate fragments, mm -hmm. one of which has now been completely deforested and quite a few others are well on the way to suffering the same fate. Um, there's five main fragments in St. Luce which have been studied quite extensively mm -hmm. but the conservation project at the moment has moved out to the more remote fragments which are yet to have been studied and assessed to really assess and um, the implications for the conservation if the areas are destroyed. Well the conservation program is a holistic approach uh, to the environment in Madagascar uh, comprises of different modules so looking at uh, lemurs uh, biodiversity monitoring and conservation, uh, community conservation, uh, and environmental education. People, when they are at home, when they say Madagascar, they always think of lemurs, and uh, most of them think that the lemurs are everywhere. Mm -hmm. So once they are here, they see that the lemurs are only in protected area. The idea is to identify their preferred habitats mm -hmm. and if we go to fragments that they're not found in and we can identify that this could possibly be a habitat which they could thrive in, then we would assess the possibilities of a translocation project of moving the lemurs from the fragments which are decreasing at the quickest rate mm -hmm. and moving them into a more stable fragment. I'm aiming to be a zookeeper. It's good in professional sense because it, le it helped me to learn to observe animals mm. in the wild. Like any, any, any <laughs> Stupid man can can feed an animal and clean the animal's cage, but to be a good zookeeper, you have to observe the animal and know what's wrong with it, and that's what I'm hoping to learn something of here. We walk through the forest and then stop at a fixed point every 10 minutes. We walk 50 meters, stop for 10 minutes and wait, mm. and just be as quiet as we can and look and listen. Then move 50 meters, stop for 10 minutes, and yeah. just do that. Uh, and see what we can find on the path and in the trees. It's a long day when that's what you do, but you really... I mean, when you find something that no one ever found before, or you, or you get a glimpse of those lemurs, I think it's worth it. Yeah. Uh, if you have to have patience to do it, and you have to have an interest in it. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I find it interesting. I'm, tra I'm traveling, yeah. Mm -hmm. This is part of my traveling. Yeah. I've already been to Central America and South Africa. It's, a, it's nice being amongst local people and uh, seeing what life is like generally over here. Has that differed from other volunteering experiences you've had? Uh, very much, yes. Yeah. Oh yeah. Um, nothing like it on the other projects I've been on. I think it's great. It's a wonderful campsite. The villages are really nice. I didn't expect it to be to be so lucky to actually live in a Malagasy village. Yeah. Uh, just staying there. I think it's wonderful and you know, with the cooks and the staff we have, it's great. We stay in a village like this, so we, we try also to, to get the volunteers to get involved with the community. Mm -hmm. And we, like what we did the other day, we play football with them, so we, like, we share cultures as well. The guys is here to help us. First of all, they, well, they function as translators mm -hmm. to the Malagash community. Uh, and then they help us spot things in the forest because they're more, way more trained than we are. Yeah. Uh, so we always have a guide leading us through the forest. The biodiversity monitoring and research is particularly important in this area. We have critically endangered species here. Uh, we have two species of palm and a gecko species that is found nowhere else on Earth. It seems that there are quite a lot of endemic species to the St. Louis region and hopefully to the segment that we're working in now. Mm. We found four so far uh, in a week, not even a week actually, five days mm. that haven't been described. So hopefully, hopefully we'll be able to find some endemic ones that could
potentially save the forest, mm -hmm. uh, and the same with the reptiles. Yeah. Uh, so that's it's hard work because we really have to move through the forest and look under every branch and every leaf. Mm. Um, but it is exciting when you do find something. She's a, she's a, oh she's a. Community conservation uh, is a really important aspect of the conservation program because we can gather the information on the species that are living in the forest, we can even gather the data on the forest itself, but until we address the problems of um, the community's need to use these forests, um, yeah, we're, we're, we're fighting losing battles. So, the replanting is very important, whether that's re trying to replant you know, critically endangered species um, to increase their population, or whether that's replanting uh, particular species uh, that's fast growing so the community can use them mm -hmm. uh, for their uh, stoves and for um, their construction, um, rather than going to the forests. The stove building that we do, we make fuel efficient stoves with the, the local people so that the forest uh, that they do have to use, the wood that they do have to use, um, goes a lot further mm -hmm. and we can dramatically reduce their need for fuel wood. We do like uh, environmental education, we present environmental education yeah. in the villages and also at school and we try to involve the volunteers as much as possible and because if the volunteers are involved the local people remember it. The children want to learn, they're so interested in why we're here and what, we, mm -hmm. what we're doing. Um, so it's brilliant to be able to talk them through the importance of the forest and uh, the animals that are in it. And of course then they're going to grow up and it's sort of uh, ingrained in their behaviour and, mm -hmm. and uh, they know the importance of the forest and hopefully we can uh, yeah, continue to conserve in the future.